Hi everybody, it's Sunday, it's October the 17th. And if you're looking at your watch and it's coming up something like 9.30 in the morning, you might think about going down to church for the in-person indoor service. Yeah, they're paying attention to masking and vaccinations, they're paying attention to distancing, but you might go and check that out. Can you tell where we are? Maybe you've been here before. This is Providence Regional Medical Center. And it's been around a long time, and I've been around a long time. In fact, I remember the days when this place used to be called Everett General Hospital. It was actually started a long time ago, just a few years after Our Saviors was formed. It was about 1894, and a local women's book club, they formed this place. It's an amazing place, a beautiful place. It's a space for love and for hard work. It's a space for miracles and for pain, for healing, and sometimes soul-crushing grief. You might know this, but there's a whole bunch of Our Saviors people that have worked here and, and that work here even now. There are therapists and nurses. There are doctors and administrators. And it's no secret that their work has been made much harder in the last 18 to 20 months. COVID-19 is a killer. And it's made everything harder, made necessary all kinds of extraordinary precautions. It has strictly limited the kind of time that families can spend with their beloved ones. It's limited the kind of time that pastors can spend inside in the building. And now these days as unvaccinated victims of COVID-19, well, their cases have demanded all kinds of extraordinary care, intensive and urgent care. And sometimes that has meant that the treatment for other kinds of things have had to wait. Injuries and heart procedures, even cancer treatments. And all of it has been really, really hard work, demanding work, exhausting work. And of all the people from our own faith community, of, of our own Our Saviors who work here, in all this time, you know what? I've never heard any of them ever complain. Not once. They just keep on showing up. They keep on doing their work, doing their jobs. It was a long time ago when Jesus' disciples got into a kind of a contest. They were disputing over who was the greatest, who could sit at Jesus' right hand and who could sit at Jesus' left. And in all of that, Jesus just kind of stopped them. And well, do you remember what he said? Do you? Let's go. When I look at pictures of exhausted nurses who give everything they've got on the job, and when I look at others who put others above themselves to serve, I am reminded that Jesus said, if you would be great, you would be the servant of all. And that is sometimes hard to do. A wise man I know said, if you're willing to take out the trash, there's always a job at the church for you. <laughs> but how many of us do that well? God, give us clean hearts. Wash us. Renew us as we try to follow in your servant footsteps. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you love us and you forgive us when we don't do as we ought and instead do as we don't want to do. 
Be with us, sustain us, give us your courage, your strength, your stamina, as we do our best to follow in your footsteps, to be servants of all. Be with us, love us through it all. We ask in your name, amen. Greetings, Dan Clements here. Peace be with you from our backyard. The first reading is Psalm 91, verses 9 through 16. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, no evil will befall you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. For God will give the angels charge over you to guard you in all your ways. Upon their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion, cub, and viper. You will trample down the lion and the serpent. I will deliver those who cling to me. I will uphold them because they know my name. They will call me and I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue and honor them. With long life, I will satisfy them and show them my salvation. The second reading is from Isaiah 53, verses four through six. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our inequities, upon him the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of all. from Mark's Gospel. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You don't know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. 
Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand and at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as the rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Hey everyone, I'm Debbie Cooper. And guess what? I'm reading an amazing story out of the Bible. It's about James and John. I want to show you some pictures here. It says Jesus and his disciples walked along a dusty road. Oh my gosh, Jesus was walking so fast that James and John, they had a hard time keeping up with him. But finally they, they stopped Jesus and said, Jesus, Jesus, we have a question for you. Jesus says, what's your question? He says, well, we were wondering if maybe, just maybe, hmm, when we get to heaven, can we sit next to you on the right side or the left side? And Jesus said, there is room for everybody in heaven. No one gets a place that's more special than anybody else because every place in heaven is special. Well, you know what? The best thing that you can do on earth is to love one another and serve one another and help everybody around the world. That's pretty amazing. And that's pretty simple, isn't it? To love and to care and help each other. I want to show you some pictures of my friends helping others. These are happy girls that are working hard, cleaning and scrubbing mats. Look at their happy faces. The second picture, look at these cool kids. They are working very hard at collecting food for our local food bank. They want to make sure that everybody has healthy food to eat because they want everybody to be healthy and well. Oh, here's my third picture. This is my granddaughter, Vivi. Hunter is a little puppy, and he gets in a lot of trouble. So she likes to read stories to him. It keeps him out of trouble, and it's helping mom, too. This boy is listening to a friend who is feeling very, very sad. Caring about others is really important to God. And God wants us all to be caring and loving to our friends every single day. This is my friend Thomas. Thomas likes to volunteer for many things. He helps with feeding families, and he volunteers for so many different things at church. But Thomas is also a Boy Scouts, and Boy Scouts volunteer to help people do many things all the time. Our camp kids are busy helping pulling weeds and keeping our playgrounds clean. That is a hard job, and we are so thankful for our camp kids. So everyone can serve God by caring and loving one another. Oh my gosh, Scruffy, what are you doing here? You brought me something? Can I see it? Oh boy, I love surprises. Oh my gosh, let me see what this is. And a plate too? Oh, Scruffy, is this a lunch? Oh my gosh, let me show you. Scruffy, it's thigh bones. How delicious. Do you mind if I share this with my other pet friends? Oh, thank you, Scruffy. Can I give you a hug? Mm, thank you so much, Scruffy. Maybe today you can go spread God's love by helping one another. Go bring joy to somebody by bringing them a flower or maybe a lunch like Scruffy. Who knows? But whatever, God wants to share with everybody. He wants us to share his love. And no matter how old you are, how big you are, how young or little you are, everybody has a special place in God's world. Have a great day, friends. Go and serve others. Great.
Do you know that expression, history doesn't repeat itself, but sometimes it rhymes? <laughs> Germany in general, and Wittenberg in particular, was a tough, tough place to live in the 1520s. There was wide disparity between the rich and the poor, and women were oppressed and exploited. There was rampant illiteracy and, and within the church a kind of hostility and antipathy because some embraced Luther's reforms and others, man, wanted nothing to do with it. Public institutions teetered on the brink and there was revolution in the air. And then in 1527, there was another threat. They called it the Black Death, bubonic plague, an ugly black patch of dead skin and infected tissue, sometimes on the groin, sometimes on the face, sometimes everywhere, but infectious and, and only partly understood and certainly deadly. This was yet another iteration, another variant of an earlier plague. Remember back in the 1300s in England and Europe and even North Africa where Millions and millions and millions died. They fought against the disease in ways that they best understood. And then they had these physicians, and they were kind of an odd lot. Were they barbers? What exactly were they? But they took to wearing this interesting headgear. It had a pronounced and strange proboscis protruding out the front of it. And to look at it, one is startled, but it was useful because it protected them, or at least shielded them from some of the orders, uh, odors and deadly pathogens. They would stuff it with dead flowers and even chamomile and, and aromatics as a way to kind of keep themselves from what they had to face. It also was a kind of warning. As other people saw these masks, they would think, yikes, watch out, there must be sick people about. And so it kept on, and the rich and the poor, the young and the old, the male and the female, all of them victims of this pestilence. Well, congregations, of course, also had to figure out what to do. I mean, it was a crisis of faith. It was also a crisis of practice. How, how are we going to organize ourselves, and what should we do? Should, should we get people together inside of a building? And, and what about the sacrament? And is it all right for us to visit one another in our homes? And what, who's going to take care of, of the dead? There were those who just wanted to leave town, just wanted to get away and, and wait out this pandemic. Does history repeat itself? Or does it just rhyme? Martin Luther had a friend. And the friend was John Hess. John was the pastor of one of the local congregations there in Wittenberg. And as Hess and leaders of that particular place were trying to sort out uh, what to do in the midst of all of this, they write to Luther and they ask for some advice. So Luther writes back with what he calls, whether one should flee from a deadly plague. And part of that text of that letter reads like this. Luther says, I shall ask God mercifully to protect us. Then I shall fumigate, help purify the air, administer medicine, and take it. I shall avoid places and persons where my presence is not needed in order not to become contaminated and thus perchance infect and pollute others and so cause their death as a result of my own negligence. See, this is such a God-fearing faith because it is neither brash nor foolhardy and does not tempt God. 
I think it's interesting to note what Luther didn't say. I mean, he could have encouraged that each and every one should do whatever they think is right for themselves. But he didn't say that. He could have encouraged people to take the medicine if they want to. But he didn't say that either. He could have encouraged, well, just take your chances. After all, if God wants you dead, you're a goner anyway. And if God wants you to live, hey, don't worry about it. But Luther certainly did not say that. No, Luther's advice is in such stark contrast to what I've heard, and I wonder if you've heard from some of our Christian friends. Luther doesn't blame the disease as if it were God's curse on the gays, or God's curse on immigrants, or God's curse on the communists. And Luther doesn't suggest that we turn our back on science, whatever form that takes in our own times. And Luther certainly did not assert his own liberty or his personal rights as a free Christian. No, Luther's appeal is to faith and reason. It is to heart and mind. It is to theology and science, to personal responsibility and citizenship. These things are not opposed to one another as, as if it was an, an either-or proposition. No, Luther says that I will pray, and then, then I will fumigate and purify the air, and I will administer medicine, and I will take it, and I will not go where I'm not needed. I will not infect and pollute others. I will not cause willingly the death of another, and I will not tempt God. History doesn't repeat itself, but I think it rhymes sometimes. Jesus said greatness is not some climb to the top. It is not a willingness to uh, uh, be only among those who enjoy a higher status, but no, it is a willingness to be among those at the bottom. Sacrifice, care for the neighbor, servanthood, deference to others. And then Jesus offers a line, offers a line that, that almost sounds as if it rhymes. I mean, if you read all the way to the end of the gospel, you see, you see a kind of echo. What is there? Do you remember? Jesus says, for the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life, to give his life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Set free from death and nourished by truth, we join in prayer for all 
God's creation. Holy One, for the gift of the church handed down through the ages and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your spirit upon all who are discerning and awaiting calls to ministry, especially Pam Karras. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Creating one. For the habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Help us realize that when one creature goes extinct, part of us dies too. May we serve the earth so that all living things flourish as you intend. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Suffering one for all who work toward justice and peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful one, for all who serve others by healing, mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness, especially Holly, Tristan, Hannah, Jace and Carter and Grace, Tyler James, baby Adrian. For Mark, Bev, Bev, Larry, Sharon, Tracy, Doreen, the sister of Ron, Bill, Bill, and Judy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sustaining one. For all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage greeters, ushers, AV techs, coffee makers, bakers, and crocheters, counters, committee leaders, teachers, and students, singers, nurturers, those who wash dishes, and those who take out the trash. Bless all who serve with generous hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Confident that you hear us, O oh God. We boldly place our prayers into your hands through Christ, our truth and life. Amen. And we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Announcements, and there's a lot going on, so please do read the e-news to get all the details. Today, Sunday, and every Sunday at 9.30, there is indoor worship. We are masked, we are vaccinated, and we're keeping our distance, but we're here together. During that time, there is godly play for the little ones, or a playground if you're a crawler or a creeper. Afterwards, there's kids club for elementary school and high school youth group with Taryn. And In Search of Shalom is the adult learning class now. So much going on on Sunday mornings. Then, this Sunday in the afternoon... Pastor Squires, Pastor Squires, I, I want oh. you to bless my friend Seely here. Oh, well, of Can course. Take care of that? Of yeah. course, Seely, I will bless Thank you. you. Oh, today, you. today at 3.30 at the Blessing of the Animals at Family and Friends Gathering, bring your pet. If your pet is hard to transport, bring a photo of your pet. Come out and join us. On Wednesday evenings, middle school youth group meets with Taryn. They're sometimes outside, but if it's cold and wet, they'll be inside, so come on for that too. Does your early reader need a Bible? We have wonderful Spark Bibles for kids, hands-on maps, stickers. On October 20th and 27th, there's a class with Pastor David. So if you'd like your early learner, early reader to get a Bible, please sign up for that one. 
October 22nd, Friday night. It's trunk or treat and I've got the candy. So come by, see the spooky preschool trunks and get your treats on October 22nd. Starts at six, ends at 7.30. There is a session for newcomers and folks who wanna learn more and meet some other new people on October 23rd. Starts at 10, bring your questions, bring your curiosity and you can end with lunch. Childcare will be available. Let us know if you wanna come on the 23rd. Thank you. Thank you for all of those who have already signed up for the food drive for Thanksgiving and Christmas. You can sign up ahead of time or you can just come out on November 14th and on December 12th and donate cash or food. We're grateful for that good work. And then on November 7th, a special treat. Bishop Shelley Bryan Wee will be with us here to preach and also to lead our adult learning session and give us a bigger picture of what's going on in the church and especially in our synod. So much good ministry happening and we are grateful for your continued support that allows all that and more to happen. Check out that e-news, there's more in there. <laughs> And now, people of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have.